Okay, so a very good evening to all of you. So today in front of us, we have another successful candidate uh, who has got into NAPAS 2021. She was waitlist number two, but ultimately with her hard work, whatever she has put in all around the year, and she has performed, but she has missed just by a whisker into the select list. But uh, uh, all the things went well because she finally got a call letter from NAPAD. So congratulations, Samriddhi, from my side and all the clarity uh, group members that you also uh, uh, ultimately made into the NAVAD final grade a list of 2021. Congratulations, Samriddhi, from my side. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, Samriddhi. So right now the students are preparing for 2022 NAVAD. So we will come into that, how students should prepare and what are the points they should uh, take into consideration. But first of all, if you can give a brief background of yours, that what is your educational background, what you have been doing and how you thought of preparing for the NABAD grade day examination. So I graduated in 2017 and I did my bachelor in engineering from information technology. So I am an engineer and uh, this uh, whole uh, stream of examinations was a very new thing for me. So after two th uh, 2017, I started my UPSC attempts and one year after that I came to know about RBI. And uh, since then, I've been preparing for UPSC and RBI, but then a, a year later, I came to know about NABAD as well. So um, I, this was my second attempt at NABAD. So uh, I've been able to clear prelims both the times, but uh, last time I could not clear the mains. This time I uh, cleared the, uh, all the three stages. So this was uh, my very brief journey in this um, uh, Okay, so being an engineer, see most of the students uh, who call me and they are also from the uh, either uh, non-agri background or you can say uh, not from the biological background and most of them are engineers only. So they when they call me, they say that, sir, agriculture is not my cup of tea. So I think you also might have thought like this earlier. So how do you cope up with the agriculture path uh, for this NABAT preparation? So I think when I compared the syllabus of NABAD uh, with my existing subjects in UPSC, there was uh, it was much easier compared to UPSC I think because UPSC is a lot broader than NABAD. Um, as far as the agriculture part is concerned, so I did have this uh, apprehension that it is not, um, you know, something that I have studied. But then I thought, you know, I thought like an engineer, that is the one more subject I'll have to cover during the course of my preparation and jaha itna we've done this is one more, and moreover it is a very interesting so um, the last time i was not very clear about how to approach agriculture and what notes to do but this time thankfully um, i had a very clear cut strategy thanks to your telegram channel and your efforts so uh, i had been able to cover most of these things and i think i compared those with the kind of questions that were asked in previous year so this was one more uh, mistake i made that i in my last attempt i did not refer to previous year questions and uh, those a lot so i tried to improve on those things and i think with some strategy with some tact you will be able to anyone irrespective of their background if they take an interest in the subjects that they're studying i think they'll be able to um, really enjoy this uh, whole syllabus okay samriddhi so uh, as you know that the prelims is knocking door this year also and 7th of september is the date of examination for this year aspirants who are preparing so I won't be talking about the qualifying sections, but it's better to talk about the merit sections at this point of time. So uh, how do you mean, what suggestions would you give to the aspirants related to your general awareness that is of 20 marks and ESI part and ARD part? If you can briefly just touch on the all the three merit sections one by one. Yes, sir. So for the merit section, uh, sir, um, the static part for ARD, I relied only on master notes mostly. And uh, what I had done was that for the master notes, I uh, uh, went through the PDFs that you had uh, uh, posted on the Telegram channel and they're for free. So it wasn't as if I'm subscribing to a course or anything like that. So uh, th that made it really easy. And um, you also have uh, YouTube videos explaining those videos. So I think. Um, this, uh, the sum amount of apprehension that I had about the concepts being difficult to understand or me not being able to understand something from an agriculture point of view, I think 
applying for a generalist post, it was uh, not such a difficult thing after going through those notes. So what I did was I went through those notes once and I had mostly used um, my devices as in I used a tablet to, I did not print out all those pages. So that saved some time. And what I did was that after I went through those PDFs, I tried to compile some of those um, master notes also. For example, this was one uh, topic of, um, yeah, the initial topics of the field crops and the agri and climatic zones. So I had just made a brief notes of all those, the main uh, factual parameters used. I had uh, used them and uh, uh, briefly wrote them down so that in the last moment, I can just go through these main uh, topics, for example, the seeds and um, allogamy and autogamy. So uh, this, this really helped me because it made me go through the master notes so many times that even during mains, we had some technical questions, uh, like there was this question on surface irrigation and uh, uh, drip irrigation, sorry. So uh, I was able to pick out many points from the master notes and just write them down as it is. So not just prelims, but the static part of ARD, help, um, the master notes helped me cover those really well. So secondly, the um, you used to post some uh, current affairs and static related flashcards on your Telegram channel. So what I had done was that I had been just downloading those and compiling them into a PDF. And I used to just uh, revise that PDF and make those highlights in my devices. So that was also that also made me uh, really easy to revise them because I still remember there were a total of 130 uh, or 132 cards before I went for the mains and I had named the file Nabard 132 to remind, <laughs> to remind me that these are the brief things I can just scroll and uh -huh. through things and the factual part uh, you could easily retain once you look at that in the colored forms you know uh, uh -huh. so colors were very important for my prelims uh, uh, preparation and specifically for ESI and uh, the current affairs part, the GA section and uh, how that was, uh, I'll show how that was. Uh, yeah. So the affairs cloud PDF that we usually refer to, I think that is um, more than enough for the prelims part. For example, uh, uh, PIB is the most important source actually, but I think for mains, PIB is a lot more important for your self-efforts, but for prelims, I think you need to be a lot more factual and uh, affairs cloud covers most of the uh, current affairs mentioned in PIB. And apart from that, your prelims power play, play uh, test series that you had launched, you had covered most of those schemes topic-wise and uh, they were, I think, direct from PIB and you know the points you uh -huh. mentioned as well. Yeah. So, and I, the questions that I got wrong over the, uh, there, I used to just take a screenshot and, you know, again, make those a PDF as well and then revise those mistakes that I had made. So, so for Affairs Cloud, this was one of the toughest thing because you need to cover this for at least uh, two to three months or four to five months if you have time before your prelims. So I think what I would suggest, especially for ESI uh, section, uh, these notes that I'm going to show, uh, I made them for my RBI attempt this year, uh, but my NABAD attempt was similar and this helped me a lot for Affairs Cloud. Um, what I used to do was that they have different sections of uh, uh, national current affairs, state-wise current affairs, and then some important, um, you know, factual information related to some sports or some other things. So, so I took a political map of India and uh, wow. on that political map of India, so UPSC habits helped me in this way. Over yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Uh, I took this map and all those uh, cur current affairs, I used to briefly mention them over here. For example, um, this Rajasthan or this M part like Karnataka, there were a lot of current affairs. So I just used to cite for mention these and then make an arrow and mention these. And the main keywords of that news, that's, for example, if there's some hydrogas plant somewhere or, you know, some... Uh, Innovation Hub was launched anyway. Uh, I used to highlight them in this fluorescent green color and the quantum of funds for NABAD preparation since facts are very important, RBI and NABAD, all these regulatory bodies. The factual part I used to uh, highlight in this pink colored uh, part so that it was a starkly different color and we were just taking a glance at it. It, uh, it was almost like, you know, uh, it, after a point of time when you keep looking at it, um, it will sort of, uh, you know, uh, graph itself on your uh, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, rest of those non-map related uh, facts, 
I had at the back of the map. I had I had used these and mentioned the important sections or important quantum of funds for different schemes and different things related for that month. So, for example, this one was for March, and then I made similar uh, thing. Uh, March me. This was for mostly the banking and economic and MOUs and all those because all of those are mentioned state wise. So I think this was very helpful that all these current affairs state wise I could briefly write. And then this was for national and other schemes from the month of March. And then, then I had made for similar thing I had done for April. So I had two maps for April, two maps for March, and uh -huh. both the front and back side. So this was almost you can say eight, in about eight to ten pages. Both these months I could cover for a first floor magazine. So you need to put that one time investment in doing this because uh, when when going. Through it, I think that is the time when you can just make it a one-time investment that once I go through this year, I'll just jot these points briefly over there and the factual part related to it because sometimes these questions are very direct. So I think that will be very helpful. You won't have to look at a first cloud again and again if you uh -huh. just put this one-time investment. Very good. Very good. ART static, have, um, your master notes and then your NABARD uh, 132 file that I had uh -huh. mentioned. I think this was more than enough for what I had done. And um, yeah. Um, so apart from that, I think there is this slight changing trend in the uh, general affairs section that they last time in about prelims, they had asked questions uh, which were uh, sort of out of the blue, for example, the uh, some space uh, 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 the, the space rocket in which Kalpana Chavla uh, uh -huh. uh, took a journey and then there were other things uh, th that were related. So I think for this you need to keep yourself updated with things happening around the world and just general i think it shows your interest in the subjects that you're preparing if you're reading your newspaper so for specifically for prelims within one or two months if you want to cover clear the prelims i think this can suffice but if you want to write the mails if you want to give a good impression in the interview i think you need to come across as someone who is interested in reading the subjects that are studying so i think this this really helped me and uh, uh, I, th I think the, the qualifying section was um, not such a big deal because you have test series and all those and you can just practice those from them, uh, from those sites. But uh, for example, all of board or whatever anyone wishes to read. But for, for example, decision making was a new topic this year. Yeah. So I had referred to uh, the PDF you loaded on decision making in your Telegram channel. Um, I didn't, uh, to be very honest, I did not take that very seriously, but I think the kind of questions asking, they were quite technical and theoretical with some of those theories directly being asked. So I would really suggest people to um, go through some sources for decision making as well. I was just lucky that out of about five to six, five questions I had attempted, and out of them, about two to three were those which you could just, you know, maybe solve with some common sense. I, I just went, uh -huh. you know, that was maybe luck on my part. But I, uh, uh, so that was, that helped me. I attempted five questions out of 10. But uh, yeah, but do take decision making seriously as well. Uh, QRE, you can prepare QRE through test series directly if you are not so sure uh -huh. about should I give time on. Uh, you know those subjects that yes. balancing that with the merit section. I think you can directly test test series for the qualifying part and for the merit section, you put in a lot of your efforts. Right. So, uh, Samriti, that's how you prepared, and uh, that's the message all of you can take. She put on her innovative method of for the maps and all. She tried to summarize all the things, and that's how the innovation works. If you want to uh, prepare for this examination, you should also innovate the things as per your circumstances. So that's very good. And that's a new method Samriti has taught all of us. So thanks, Samriti, for sharing your that innovative idea. So uh, another students can take into that uh, their consideration. Now, coming on to the mens, how was your preparation for the mens, particularly the descriptive part? Uh, you are a UPC aspirant, that's good. But uh, what extra efforts did you put in for your uh, descriptive preparation of Napar? So, um, uh, it be, being from UPSC background did help me, uh, to be very honest, but I think it, it doesn't have to be the only necessary criteria, because apart from that, I think it's the same kind of uh, 
news and current affairs and uh, information that we all have access to and with some practice and again some uh, strategy or tact i think anyone should be able to clear uh, this part as well so for example like i told you i just uh, uh, i did not give more than two to three months before my prelims and all the assessment tests and everything that you put up i just went through those parts so uh, for mains uh, i had just the same amount of time about one month to prepare for it so sir so for mains what i did was the english descriptive part i solely relied on um, some very basics like you mentioned about uh, you know the way you need to answer the descriptive uh, questions in english matters a lot so for example if your uh, word limit has been described as 150 for a presley it would um, be helpful if you stick to the word limit of 150 maybe plus minus 5 or 10 percent words because that's the software the words so i don't know if uh, how how much manual or how much computerized checking uh, it is but i think if there is a software checking the number of words and the word limit has been mentioned so it makes sense to follow that word limit so 150 uh, the prescribed word limit should be i think at uh, two number one and number two um, for example we uh, when we're writing descriptive answers for english also we tend to fall into this habit of writing multiple paragraphs in that essay so uh, this suggestion that you gather keep it into just very three uh, clear uh, blocks of uh, you know introduction body and uh, conclusion so that helped me and i tried not to put uh, too much you know fancy language like we tend to you know sometimes use that so keeping it simple in english is always good and helpful and i think anyone can do that with some practice you do need to practice it doesn't come naturally because um it, it this paper is very important and you need to put in some practice for english because it decides your score ultimately right and so for objective and esi i had a completely different approach so uh, in objective and esi i try to make sure to write in points as much as possible every uh, uh, for example so there was this uh, question on msp that uh, uh, there was something related to msp that how um, uh, what are the challenges and uh, something like that so sir so i had clearly divided those uh, that uh, you get some rough sheets so over there just take maybe two or three minutes to briefly form a structure or uh, if you're not sure how to progress uh, on the question so the first part, the two, three lines are just those introduction about MSP or something related to why that topic has been in news. So MSP had been used due to the farm laws, protests and uh, all those related news. So you could have mentioned anything related to MSP as your introduction. But I think um, apart from that, the second part, uh, third part of the question, I kept it strictly in points. For example, uh, that's again a software which you which tries to make your typing very difficult for some strange reason. So you need to keep your cool and then uh, keep, uh, I, what I did was that in capitals, I typed the subheading one and then in capitals, I typed the subheading two. So within those subheadings, I uh, very distinctly put number one number two, number three, and all those points. And whatever sentence I wanted to write, no paragraphs at all within those headings, I made it strictly into uh, points. And any report, so for example, for prelims, all this affairs cloud section that we'll be reading, there are so many committees formed, there are so many uh, statistics that we come across. And for NABAR, these stats like uh, advanced estimates and then, you know different kinds of estimates of different uh, uh, props, those are very important. So if you're able to use some of those, um, you don't have to be very, you know, uh, accurate to the decimal point, but some idea that, you know, this much has been our acreage and this has been increasing, this has been decreasing. It's very easy to show those kind of things. And so secondly, for mains, um, the MPP program, the mains play program that you had launched, um, I had been I had uh, not been keeping up with the news section uh, very regularly. So this could also be one of the mistakes that I made that uh, made me land in the waiting list and not the select list. So I was not very thorough with the newspaper regularly. Uh, but in MPB, you had provided some articles, some news articles and the links to it. So I had gone just through those articles. and. Going through just those articles, whatever points I could remember, I had just highlighted those and using those, I uh, always, I tried my best to mention some uh, news, uh, some 
you know a uh, report or something that had been mentioned over there so for example um, even your videos that you had discussed uh, for those descriptive questions in that i think we had not uh, alex i hadn't read it somewhere but the eco rap report which we had uh, which was released i think just a week before the mains so in in that we had discussed that the amount of formalization has increased and we um, you yeah. know uh, then we had also in one of the videos you had done the nafis report which said uh, you know different stats related to it and again that nafis report and all those things i had uh, you know covered in my notes so you know all these points that um, i have this was the whole nafis report that i had mentioned just in those points in that video so from this uh -huh. i remembered that the amount of institutional credit has also been increasing now i didn't know the exact Bye. percentage but at least once you have written there were some things that i did on my di digital device but some things that i knew that i had to write them down mm -hmm. them. yes so, sort of things at least gives you the idea of a trend that has been taking place so keeping that trend in mind i knew that nafis report does mention that uh, institutionalization of credit has been increasing so these kind of things there was this question on um, formal credit and institutionalization of credit so i was able to use those things uh, despite not having gone through all the newspaper articles uh, um, which i should have so there were a lot of these different things so it was all about your strategy and, and being like brief reading maybe less helped me more this time because for UPSA as to do this, I used to try and read everything that was under the sun, but um, I wasn't able to replicate that, reproduce that. Mm -hmm. But this time this helped me. And apart from that, um, uh, yeah, for MSP again, you had mentioned this term, term called mono serialization in one of your mm -hmm. videos. So I hadn't read that article, but I was able to, you know, write that term in capitals. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was yeah. this kind of thing. And then for the master notes, there was this um, whole question on um, drip irrigation. So I remember the pros and con points mentioned over there. So I remember that, you know, it could be used on an undulated terrain and it could be uh, the efficiency is up to 90 to 95%. So I think it wasn't as if I was reading everything or finding notes on my own, but mm -hmm. just the thing that you had heard, once you're able to recall that uh, or you're faced with that time pressure, you're able to, your brain is able to recall something related that you had read about it so i would just suggest that both because i had gone through these master notes about four to five times sometimes you know, while reading the pdf sometimes while making notes sometimes while doing this and doing that and so for the last part of the rural development part so you had again um mentioned um uh, the um, so the rural development uh, part you had mentioned in that rural development document which covered different schemes so I think apart from prelims, apart from mains, it is important for me to emphasize upon the importance of schemes because in prelims, you could have just one or two options, but in mains, they ask very in-depth questions. For example, there was this question on this um, Ayushman Bharat project this time, uh, in which this option, there were these options which said that, you know, uh, you you have 10 to 15 days of, um, you know, hospitalization expenses, uh -huh. and is there a of ambulance being arranged for the patient to be taken to the hospital or not so these kind of questions if you haven't either gone through pib yourself or you haven't gone through sources that cover schemes in that detail i think it might get very difficult so uh, for the schemes part again i had uh, used that schemes document so there were some of these very similar and confusing schemes that we have for example uh, rural development program and then Swachh Bharat mission and then Ayushman and uh, all those things uh, again I had mentioned uh, sort of yeah I had briefed them down here for example my whole um, um, uh, uh, yeah so my whole na national rural livelihood mission like this was from that whole pdf this was all that I had compiled compressed into so even if i had to write a mains answer i was able to mention some these were the broad keywords and most likely barring one or two exceptions they won't go beyond these keywords you know the universal social mobility and the pip right. and the G's federations and all those kind of things and then the bunch of sutra and all those related things which i mentioned so these key words are important once we're going through previous year questions and once we're going through these things and again there was this um there was this exact question on the uh, national mission for sustainable agriculture so it's meant they will in your 
uh, file again. There were these four main submissions of this rain fed development, and then you know, climate change and all those. So these are very confusing. And there was this one exact question on integrated watershed um, or something like that uh, in these itself. So uh -huh. I think if you have like direct sources, like just stick to them and replace them multiple times. So for me, okay. I was. Uh, uh, the best way for me to revise was that first go through and highlight the PDF and then in the second time write it down some, somewhere else and then in the third revision highlight those notes as well. So, uh, you know, while writing and highlighting everything, it just somehow stayed, something stayed in my mind. So, right. that was one of the important things that helped me and there were, and apart from this, there, there are some, you know, really strange questions like there was this question on crossbreeding this time. So, yeah. uh, I had no idea idea about little definition of uh, uh, what uh, you know the kind of the types of cross readings that we have and you know uh, how the, the domains in which they could be used but then there was the second part of the question that what are the disadvantages you could have with that now irrespective of whatever uh, object is being crossbred. I think there are some very common ideas and examples that we come across again newspapers or different areas where you could you know mention examples related to it. So for example in, during the paper I couldn't really remember A1 or A2 which type of milk is better but I just mentioned yes. that the uh, there is a difference between the quality of these milks and you know uh, yeah. the crossbreeding is one that that was a very clear example and then um, you know so I didn't know exactly, and I still haven't checked up whether which one is better or not, but I do know that there's a difference between the quality of these. And you could, mention, and I mentioned, I think four to five points related, like examples related to this. So I think, and then you could always add more dimensions. Again, this UPSC habit helped me over there that if I could not remember yeah. three technical dimensions, add some moral dimensions, add some, you know, other so social dimensions that if the Indian reads their sort of, uh, decreasing in usage overall you know it also has a social dimension to it and social implications of it so you know over there uh, basically the interface is such that the more you keep typing the more uh, points will keep stri striking you yeah. but if you're still not sure like divide your time you know the time limits for um, this much uh, uh, you know these are this is the word limit and this much time you have so divide it and in your mind just be prepared uh, in the very beginning itself that you know i need to uh, maybe keep two three minutes and um, select the questions and just quickly jot down a few points that i remember but also remember the time limit that it should not exceed for example if i've kept five minutes I should not just, you know, whatever I've written, just start writing it over there because uh, you tend to, you know, flow <laughs> while uh, writing all of that. And so apart from that, I think um, one very big dilemma is about the word limit. Now, I did not follow, like, I think the word limit mentioned is the maximum limit. Like, for uh, 400, uh, uh, the 400 words is the maximum limit for those 10 markers and 600 words is the maximum for those 15 markers. So, I had written about 200 something words for the 400 markers, 215, but uh, less than 280. And for the 600 words, I had written about 400 something words. So more than 430, but less than uh -huh. 480, something like that. So I think it uh, more than what the quantum of your words, I think more than that, what matters is what you are writing within that framework. So yeah, despite all of this, I did fall short uh, in my objective and subjective uh, performance, which was, and that too by, you know, a narrow margin, which is what, you know, brought me in the waiting list instead of the select list. So anyone who has, you have one to two months at least right now. So if you wish to, you know, uh, do these things well, you could really invest your time and, you know, uh, try to do the best that you can. So apart from that, if there is anything else I have missed out, no, no, no. You have given a very detailed analysis and I think this will help a lot of candidates because you have explained each and everything very beautifully. Uh, Samriddhi, thanks, thanks to you that you have explained in such a beautiful way all the things. And it shows your hard work, how, how much hard work you have put in for all, all your examination. So I think that you will succeed more in your life. And coming on to the next Samriddhi, uh, for this year's students in the prelims examination, what three messages would you like to give to them that they should not do? Uh, hardly 30, 40 days are left. So what should not 
they do in this 30 40 days any three ne uh, negative things they should not do so i think the first thing would be uh, to uh, what you should not do is uh, you should not uh, try to if you don't have any beginning or any understanding or background of agriculture or uh, in fact even of pib right now i would suggest don't try to um, maybe think that i'm a superman and i'll read all those six to seven hundred words of uh, information all at once because that is very difficult to retain until and unless you don't have like such amount of determined uh, you know determination that right from the morning up to the night uh, you know that it does take uh -huh. so, right. um, just, uh, whatever source that you follow just stick to that if you find there is something um, you know uh, lacking over there or something that you want to add on to it you you're always for example i googled a lot of things i uh, sometimes i used to uh, the schemes it's very helpful to refer to some of those original websites and go to the websites and read some things from there and then uh, you know you could refer to any other freely available source of, uh, right. uh, which is uh, but what matters is that the main source that you're referring to just be uh, you know thorough with that keep uh, and second thing that you should not do is um, you should not avoid revising because anything that will help you in the exam is uh, the only thing that will help you is your revision whatever you will be able to uh, replicate in the mains especially for mains your revision is very important so try um, practicing and revising as much as you can and third thing that you should not do is you should not take it lightly especially for people belonging to upsc or people belonging to maybe even uh, agricultural background if someone thinks that maybe you know i have an edge in some way so i will have an edge in this examination that will set in a lot of complacency which you know towards the end of the exam you will not be able to uh, cover up so, for example, all these uh, schemes or whatever you're reading, just whatever method works the best for you, for your revision, try to do that. And also, one more point would be that whenever you're reading some scheme or something, try to think about it. Uh, right. Try to think, uh, put some thought into it. Number one, I think you should always know the implementing agency because sometimes even in interview, they can directly ask you which nodal agency directly implements the scheme. So, you know, it's not just about your prelims or means like interview Pito Dena. So you have to, you know, prepare everything from right. that point that you are understanding the subject, you're understanding a work culture, the requirement of Nabad, you know, to that extent. And finally, when you're thinking about something, there will be different opinions generating in your head. Whether or not those opinions are correct or not is really of no consequence. What matters is that when you're putting your thought into it, when there is a question that you have to write on it, you will remember both the pros and cons. Right. You will remember what are the arguments on this. You will remember what are the pros and cons and challenges and ways to resolve this issue. Uh, and it will be really easy for you to come up with some new and different dimensions. For example, that question on institutionalization of or formalization of credit. I had not, that is not something everyone prepares that, you know, such kind of questions beforehand. But then anything related to that question, I think it it will strike you more uh, quickly if you've put some thought, put some thought into the idea of what is happening, you know, the trends that are taking place in your economy. Because after all, you know, this is not just your exam, but studying the economy of the country. So it's really important to put your mind into it and take interest in it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's 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 good. So uh, thanks, Samriti, for dealing in uh, such a detailed manner. I think first candidate you are that who have dealt all the subjects in a, such a detailed manner, and it would immensely, immensely, immensely help all the candidates. And it's a request that all the candidates apply your common sense. Don't directly jump onto the things. You have your brain. You have to apply your brain and you have to think upon it whenever you're reading something in any notes or whenever you're attempting the question. Don't try to blindly take any answer, but try to think upon it. If you think upon it, you will get answers of much more five questions related to that. Right. So like that, you have to think. 
So Samriddhi, thanks, thanks a lot for sharing your all your ideas and views to all the aspirants. It will immensely help them. And best of luck for your journey to Bombay, that is Mumbai. You will be joining Nabad shortly. Best of luck, best of luck, best of luck from my side. And all the best to everyone appearing for any exam. Okay, 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 Samriddhi. Chalo, let's uh, put off.